New research suggests Planet 9 could be a primordial black hole by Thomas Nowakowski, physics.org, dated September 30, 2019. The hypothetical Planet 9, assumed to be lurking somewhere in the outskirts of our solar system, may not be a planet at all. A new study published September 24 on the archived preprint server suggest that the mysterious and still undiscovered object might be a primordial black hole. Primordial black holes are old and relatively small black holes that emerged soon after the Big Bang. They are thought to have been formed as a result of density fluctuations in the very early universe. It is believed that the primordial black holes with the lowest mass have likely evaporated. However, those with larger masses may still exist, evaporating at the present epoch even though they have never been directly observed. Astronomers Jakub Schultz of Durham University and James Anwin of the University of Illinois at Chicago assume that primordial black holes could reside even closer to us than we think. In a recently published paper, they pondered the possibility that the elusive Planet 9, theorized to be orbiting the Sun at a distance between 300 and 1,000 astronomical units or AU, could be such an old and compact black hole. Explaining their intriguing hypothesis, the researchers focus on two unsolved gravitational anomalies of similar mass anomalous orbits of transneptunian objects or TNOs and an excess in microlensing events. What is interesting is that both events are due to objects with masses estimated to be between 0.5 and 20 Earth masses. The anomalies of TNO orbits are assumed to be triggered by a new gravitational source in the outer solar system. While it is widely accepted that this source could be a free-floating planet, Schultz and Anwin argue that the primordial black hole scenario is not unreasonable and should be taken into account. A primordial black hole with a maximum mass of 20 times that of Earth's mass will have an event horizon radius of only 17.74 centimeters. This event horizon is a boundary in space-time through which matter and light can only pass inward towards the mass of the black hole. Nothing, not even light, can escape from inside the event horizon. At a distance of between 300 AU and 1000 AU from the Sun, it will be very difficult to discover such a tiny object. And this explains why Planet 9 hasn't been discovered yet until now. So what was the basis of astronomers Hakub Schultz and James Anwin for proposing that Planet 9 can actually be a primordial black hole? The researchers Hakub Schultz and James Anwin say a strange set of gravitational anomalies recently identified by the Optical Gravitational Lensing Experiment, or OGLE, may help explain why Planet 9 is actually a black hole. As part of the OGLE project, astronomers monitored the sky in search of gravitational microlensing events, which occur when a massive foreground object, such as a black hole, crosses directly in front of a background object such as a star. If the alignment of the objects is perfect, the heavy foreground object acts as a sort of lens, distorting and amplifying the light from the object behind it. Based on five years of Ogle observations, 
researchers uncovered six ultra-short microlensing events with crossing times of 0.1 to 0.3 days, which are suggestive of very fast-moving objects between 0.5 Earth masses and 20 Earth masses zipping past in front of background stars. This isn't how planets look to ogle, researcher James Unwin said, and there's good reason to suspect that the six objects might be small-sized primordial black holes rather than large free-floating planets instead. Also, note that when Planet 9 was first proposed in early 2016 by California Institute of Technology's Batikin and Brown, they estimated its mass to be between 5 to 10 times the mass of Earth. The fact that Batikin's and Brown's mass estimate for Planet 9 falls within the range of Ogle's mass estimate of between 0.5 to 20 times the mass of Earth is quite a coincidence, according to researcher Jakub Schultz. Now, another reason why Planet 9 could be the primordial black hole observed by Ogle is the location or region where these observations were made, namely towards the galactic bulge, which is near the galactic center in the direction of the constellations Sagittarius, Alphucus, and Scorpius, where also the Milky Way appears brightest. Constraints on Earth mass primordial black holes from Ogle five year microlensing events, Physics Department, the University of Tokyo, dated April 23, 2019, page 3. In this paper, we consider the microlensing datasets obtained from the five years Ogle survey. In galactic coordinates, the Ogle fields are located in the range of galactic latitude greater than or equal to negative 15 degrees and less than or equal to 15 degrees, and galactic longitude greater than or equal to negative 20 degrees and less than or equal to 20 degrees. Throughout this paper, we simply assume that the Ogle field is in the direction to the field BLG505 with galactic latitude and longitude equal to negative 2.389 degrees and 1.0879 degrees, respectively, which has the largest number of background stars among the Ogle fields. If we use Stellarium to locate where the six microlensing events that are suspected to be primordial black holes were observed, we see that it is located in the constellation Scorpius. Coincidentally, note that according to Batikin and Brown hypothesis, which was first proposed in early 2016, the perihelion, or the nearest point to the sun of Planet 9, would be in the general direction of the southerly areas of Serpents, of Ucus, and Libra. Now notice how these southerly constellations are located very near Scorpius, where the suspected primordial black holes were detected. Thus, by combining Ogle's observation with Batigin and Brown's hypothesis, one can point to Planet 9 being a cluster of six or more primordial black holes that are nearing its perihelion. Black holes are well known for their ability to pull matter into them, but not all material near a black hole finds itself lost inside the black hole. Some bits of matter just outside the point of no return, called the event horizon, are accelerated away at near light speeds, creating jets of particles shooting out and away from the black hole. One famous black hole in the galaxy, Messier 87, is observed to blast out particles that are moving faster than 99% the speed of light. Now why do I say that Planet 9 will eject relativistic jets of matter before it actually reaches perihelion? A black hole has been observed to belch out a superfast particle jet right after swallowing a star. Giant black hole swallows a star and belches out a superfast particle jet by Lee Billings. Marshalling a decade's worth of data from telescopes around the world, 
scientists have captured new details of a gargantuan black hole feasting on a hapless star, watching as the black hole consumed its prey and burped out a jet of material moving at a significant fraction of the speed of light. The results were published in the June 14, 2018 edition of Science and could help researchers better understand how black holes grow and influence their galactic surroundings. Now all it takes for Planet 9 to eject this kind of relativistic jet is for it to encounter objects in space that it can easily shred apart as they fall towards its event horizon. When this shredded matter is spun away from Planet 9 in the form of a jet, most of its energy goes into the shredded matter's relativistic speed motion. But some of it is changed into light in the form of gamma rays. Thus, these jets blasting out of Planet 9, a cluster of primordial black holes, will transform Planet 9 from being unobservable due to its minuscule size to suddenly being visible with the brightness like that of several gamma ray bursts. I believe this will happen when Planet 9 reaches the asteroid belt, and there, Planet 9's gravitational field, which is equivalent to a maximum of 20 Earth masses, will disturb the asteroids in the belt, causing some of them to fall towards Planet 9's event horizon and be shredded to fine grain traveling at relativistic speeds. Now why do I believe Planet 9's orbit takes it as close as the asteroid belt, which is 2.2 to 3.2 astronomical units or AU from the Sun? I actually believe Planet 9's perihelion comes as close as the orbit of Venus, which is only 0 0.71844 AU from the Sun. And this means Planet 9's perihelion actually comes between the Earth and the Sun. I will be explaining this in detail later on. In addition to Planet 9's sudden brightening when it starts shredding apart the asteroids it will encounter in the asteroid belt, these powerful relativistic jets will also propel Planet 9 to come closer to the Sun than it should have been. Now what will happen if Planet 9 comes close enough to cast some of its jet material traveling at relativistic speed toward Earth? Since the event horizon radius of Planet 9 is estimated at 17.74 cm, I would assume material coming from its jet will not have a radius bigger than this. Using only 1% of Planet 9's radius as the shredded material's radius, or 1.774 millimeters, and using the average density of an asteroid, which is 2 grams per cubic centimeter for its density, the equivalent yield of such an asteroid grain moving at 90% the speed of light and grazing at 45 degrees from horizontal will be approximately 405 tons of TNT. This kind of explosive yield comes close to a series of explosive effects tests, each having 500 tons of TNT conducted by the United States Navy Bureau of Ships and known as Operation Sailor Hat. Now imagine a seemingly endless stream of similar-sized asteroid grains continuously bombarding Earth, with each grain producing explosive yield equivalent to 405 tons of TNT. Such will be the destruction Planet 9 can bring when its relativistic jet comes close enough to our planet. Now let me explain why I believe Planet 9's perihelion comes as close as the orbit of Venus. There is a theory that tries to explain why Mars lost its atmosphere and the liquid water that once flowed across the Martian surface. This theory is authored by Cole Brown, a researcher at Penn State University working with planetary scientist Darren Williams, also of Penn State. The Martian surface 
is gouged by river-like features and spreading deltas, all of which seem to suggest liquid water once flowed on the surface. Four billion years ago, the young sun was dimmer, shining at only about 75% of its current brightness. By itself, the newborn star wasn't hot enough to keep Mars warm and prevent its liquid water from turning to ice if the planet were sitting in its current orbit at 1.5 astronomical units or AU. And this is why Brown and Williams speculated that Mars' orbit was once close enough to the Sun to let it dance with Venus. Because remember, flowing liquid water and not ice was what formed the river-like features and spreading deltas on its surface. Was young wet Mars once close enough to the Sun to dance with Venus? By Nola Taylor Red, dated September 4, 2018. Brown and Williams noticed that the region near Venus would have been about the right temperature for Mars to hold on to water when the Sun was young and dim. Using computer models, they found that the two planets, Mars and Venus, could have evolved together over the course of about 100 million years, a brief enough time for liquid water to form on the surface. The two worlds would have remained tightly locked, keeping an unchanging face pointed toward each other for that brief period of time until instabilities in their orbit finally drove them apart. Brown and Williams did not explain what the instabilities in the binary orbit of Mars and Venus were that finally drove them apart. I believe this instability was caused by Planet 9 during a close encounter with the binary planets and when its strong gravitational field pulled Mars away from Venus and hurled it to its current orbit which is farther away from the Sun than Venus. This also explains why Venus' rotation is retrograde. In the website windows2universe.org, a question was asked on January 31, 2008. Why does Venus rotate the opposite way to all the other planets in our solar system? The website answered, Venus' retrograde rotation is believed to be caused by some catastrophic event that happened long ago during its formation phase. From the cratering we see on other planetary surfaces, because of its thick atmosphere, we can't see Venus' surface. We know that soon after the planets were formed, there were still some large mini-planets orbiting the Sun. One of these may have collided with Venus, altering its rotation. So what are we facing in the immediate future now that there is evidence that Planet 9 is nearing perihelion, which is somewhere between the Earth and the Sun? We are facing Planet 9, a cluster of primordial black holes which will eject relativistic jets of matter having tremendous explosive yields as it crosses the asteroid belt. And since Planet 9 comes between the Earth and the Sun, there is a real chance that these relativistic jets of matter will be pointed towards Earth.